Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're hanging out in a, a wonderful little neighborhood here in Washington, D.C. You can hear some birds chirping in the background. Love that. And we're checking out probably my favorite electric bike model in the Specialized Urban Series. This is the Como 4.0. It sits right in between the 3.0 and the 5.0. And what you get is a speed pedal X. So someone who might be commuting, wants to zip along a little bit faster, this bike can do that. You get a, a higher battery capacity, 504 watt hours, and more modal power. So this is up to uh, 72 Newton meters of torque, 250 to 520 watts. It's, it's a pretty capable motor. I think the hardware is fairly similar to the Vado 3.0 but the price point's only $350 more, right? So for me, as someone who, I, I tend to be a little bit sportier, I enjoy going a little bit faster, it's totally worth it to have that additional range because of the battery. And that battery, it might not get you quite as far as you think just based on power because again, you do have that speed motor, but you don't have to ride fast. There are three levels of assist. You can kind of use one of the lower levels if you want. But the geometry of this bike is very nice. Five different frame sizes. It does come in this, what I'm calling a step through. You know, it's not quite as low as some of the real wave bikes, but it's stiffer. It's a little bit more performant that way. So five frame sizes from step through over to high step. This is Charlie's bike. I'm here with him. He's the owner of Electricity Bikes here in DC. They've got a few different stores. And you can see this thing is just totally kitted out. So I'm gonna come back to this and we're gonna go over some of the neat upgrades that he's done. But I wanna focus on the stock bike to begin with. And just to give you an idea of what, what's really on offer here. Okay, so for $33.50, you're getting a bike that only comes in charcoal gray for 2020, which to me, you know, it's professional. It's kind of gender neutral. And we've got these little accents here, these chrome accents and stuff. Um, but it, it really works with the black, right? So you got this nice black handlebar, black locking ergonomic grips, seat post, the saddle. I love this saddle. It's called the cup and it's extra wide, but not so wide up front at the nose that you're gonna chafe your legs. So you can still pedal comfortably. It's got these rubber bumpers and even an integrated light. Um, these nice plastic fenders, they're connected really beautifully, right? A lot of times fenders are connected on the outside of the frame. These ones are all on the inside. Even up here on the base of the fork, it actually goes into the fork. So that's uh, definitely a step above and Specialized is a pretty sporty, stylish brand. You can see that the tubing is all hydro formed, kind of raked forward on that uh, fork. Nice smooth welds, the tubing, just really really beautiful. And then they've got some additional bottle cage bosses. So the battery pack right here has a couple on it. And there's really not a lot that you can fit there just because there's not a lot of space on the step through. So it's nice that they've got additional bosses way up here on the top tube. And they've put them high up so that when you're stepping over the frame, you don't kick your, your bottle cage or maybe your folding lock or whatever. So on Charlie's bike over here, you can see that with the high step, that top tube is sloped down pretty aggressively and it, it meets those uh, seat stays really nicely. So the bike has a beautiful look, but the step over height is still a little bit lower than a traditional diamond frame. Okay, so you're getting like uh, some stiffness here. You're getting three frame sizes with like the largest frame only comes in the high step and then two different frame sizes in the step through. But anyway, you can see the bottle cage bosses here are actually you know, there's enough space. You can put one of those Z cages from Specialized, you click the bottle in from the side, and then he's got a folding lock here and stuff. Really nice setup. So back to this one, we were looking at like, what can you actually put here? Uh, there's this thing called the boomerang. It's like a GPS bike theft prevention uh, accessory that you could put on there if you wanted to. But otherwise, I don't know, it might be a, 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 bit, a bit tight uh, for other accessories. Coming down here to the pedals, these are nylon platform pedals with a sandpaper grip. They're pretty nice. They're not gonna cut you up if you do slip off the way that some of the metal pedals might. So it's a great urban choice. Uh, Praxis work cranks, they come in 170 or 175 millimeter length, depending on the frame size. So that's specialized really dialing everything in and trying to have the whole bike fit your body. 48 tooth chain ring with a plastic uh, guard and that's gonna keep your pants or maybe your skirt ends from getting snagged and greasy. And I love that they've got this aluminum alloy chain ring with narrow wide tooth pattern. So every other tooth is narrow or wide and that fits perfectly into the chain and it doesn't allow it to bounce around or rattle and derail quite as easily. 
back here at the derailleur and the cassette, we're going from a nine speed on the Como 3 up to 10 speed on the Como 4. This is part of the upgrade. So it's 11 to 42 teeth instead of 11 to 36 teeth. That 42 tooth chain ring is gonna give you, not chain ring, this is a, a sprocket, that's the chain ring. That, that larger uh, sprocket is gonna give you a little bit easier climbing ability, which is nice. This bike weighs about 48.7 pounds, roughly two pounds heavier than the Como 3. And that two pounds comes back to the higher capacity battery um, and maybe the cassette here having that extra ring and then the plastic fender. So it's not not a huge difference in weight. And again, being being that this has like the higher power, higher torque motor, that might also, there might be some more copper winding or something in there. So back to the cassette. Um, Shimano Dior derailleur versus Alivio. It's got the Shadow Plus clutch. That's that little gray uh, lever right there. And if you put it in the up position, it tightens the whole drivetrain up. So the chain's not gonna bounce around quite as much. This is a feature I originally saw on mountain bikes. And it was nice because you're off road and there's a lot of bounce happening. The same thing happens when you're riding at high speed. So for a speed pedelec to have that clutch, I think that's really nice. You could put it in the down position if you're riding around the neighborhood and you want shifting to be a little bit easier physically because there's, you know, it's a wire that you're pushing on those trigger shifters. Shifting's gonna be easier and it's gonna be easier to do wheel maintenance at the back of the bike to take that wheel off if you need to. Hopefully you won't have to do too much wheel maintenance because these Nimbus Sport tires have black belt puncture protection. So they're designed to be very reliable. They've got that reflective sidewall stripe. Even the rims have reflective stickers on them, which is pretty cool. Some of the other uh, Vado bikes, this is the Como, kind of the upright relaxed model. Specialized has one called the Vado that's a little bit more aggressive and sporty, kind of a commuter platform that comes with a rear rack and metal fenders. Those fenders actually had stickers on them. So that's an area where it's like, you know, these plaz, these still custom, nice fenders, but they don't have the stickers, um, you know. Down here, we've got the kickstand with an adjustable length and it's a very stylish kickstand, same thing. It's like kind of pointed, which could be an issue if you're in really soft terrain or like maybe it's wet it could poke through I haven't had too many issues with it but that's just something I want to call out at least it's adjustable length then we come up here to the front of the bike um, I mentioned that the saddle has a light built into it well we've also got this headlight and I love that it's got uh, windows on the side so this has a 180 lumen output it's a Herman's light and it's mounted high enough that it won't get blocked by that fender which is really nice and potentially stay out of the way if you do add like a front rack and a front rack does come with the super high-end Vado 5.0 Charlie calls it the pizza rack. You can see it right there and it connects to where that light was. So on, in his case, he's put the lights up here and I think that's how it comes. But if you went with an optional aftermarket front rack, you might have to move that light or there'd be some questions about how it's positioned. So I love having integrated lights because they complement the reflective sidewalls and everything. They keep you safe on a darker colored bike. This rear light is kind of a question mark in my mind though, because you know if you're wearing a longer coat, and your coat hangs down a little bit behind you while you're pedaling, it could block that light. And if you add a rear rack, because there are bosses for doing so, when you put a trunk bag on it, it could block the light then too. Or if you want to swap out that rigid post, 30.9 millimeters on that seat post diameter, by the way, if you want to swap that out for a suspension post like Charlie's done, well, you can't really use the light anymore, right? Like the wire these aren't always hollow and you've kind of got to take it out and disconnect it. It makes it a little bit trickier. I think he's actually taken it off because he does have the trunk bag and he's got the rear light integrated into the rack. So those are some of the little trade-offs and stuff, but this is still my favorite in the lineup just because of that value price point and then the functionality just of having high speed, having a little bit more torque on the motor. I'm here with Charlie. He's been hanging out just kind of in the background and I invite you to, to share anything else that you feel like maybe I haven't touched on before we uh, take that battery off. I, I think you've covered most of it, Court, because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that light situation is uh, a bit of a challenge. I mean, it's really clean in the integration mm -hmm. uh, instead of having to run all these wires through the fender. But like you say, with the trunk bag or a jacket, it could block that. And for me, it's a safety thing. It's just sort of like, just be aware. I mean, the fact that it comes with lights is a great first step and some people will put them on their helmets right imagine that that's pretty good um, but it's it's just sort of a, an awareness thing for me that this bike is a super it's a great platform right with the five different sizes they only sell through dealers so 
you, you carry a bunch of these different bikes. You have different colors, different model levels. So, the, I, I, exactly. So, the distinction, I think, between this and a lot of the other bikes that are similar is how light it is and mm. how clean the integration. That's a great point. I mean, yeah, and for, for kind of a cruiser almost with the swept back bars and the ergo grips and stuff, it is pretty light, 48.7 pounds for a large frame. That's what we're looking at here. Um, the other thing that I haven't touched on, I, I usually leave for last is the brakes. Um, excellent brake setup here. So we go to Shimano versus Tektro. They're both hydraulic and I'm comparing the Como 3 to the Como 4 here. 180 millimeter rotor up front a lot of your weight shifts forwards when you're stopping. So having a bigger rotor gives you a mechanical advantage and it also cools a little bit faster. 160 millimeter in the rear, but again, both hydraulic. So if you're someone who's wearing gloves or you have you know, hands you don't wanna pull as hard, these are gonna be great. And if you're someone like me who's used to mountain bikes, well, hydraulic brakes, that's all the way, that's all they use now because they are so just precise and easy to actuate. All those cables are internally routed through the frame. It looks really beautiful. While we're looking down here, I should point out there's this plastic like vent cover for the motor. So water and some dust could maybe get in there, but it's supposed to drain out and it's also supposed to help the motor stay a little bit cooler. And then the other performance feature of most of the specialized bikes I've been looking at is that they, they have these through axles. So for kind of a city cruiser bike to have a 15 millimeter through axle up front, is just phenomenal. That means it's it's thicker than like the nine millimeter axle we see on a lot of cheaper bikes with a quick release skewer. This does not have quick release. You need to use a five millimeter hex key. Same thing for uh, the seat clamp. And then in the rear, we have a 12 millimeter through axle. So the point being, this is a little bit more theft resistant at racks. You don't have the quick release stuff. It's, it's definitely just a tighter setup all around. And then down here, see that little plastic piece with a magnet? That's measuring rear wheel speed. Now in the past, a lot of companies would be using these, and a lot of them still do, like a little magnet that clamps right onto one of these spokes. And I love the spokes, the hubs, everything's black. Again, beautiful matching stuff, but that could get bumped easily. And it just is not as tight and clean as this. So the motor is measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque very rapidly. And it provides up to 120 RPM support, which means you can pedal quickly and the motor's not gonna fall behind. So this is one of my favorite drive systems. Uh, the Broza motors have like a, Gates carbon belt drive inside that's very smooth. It kind of balances between gears. It's not just gears on gears grinding. It's it's kind of a quieter, smoother experience. And it's also a relatively lightweight motor, 7.5 pounds uh, versus 8.8 .8 pounds for the Bosch performance line motors, for example. And we also have Shimano now, we have Yamaha. There are other companies coming into the, the game, but I like Broza quite a bit. Have they been pretty reliable for you, Charlie? Or? They have, I mean, every motor, every system has got its challenges. And um, we've 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 had, you know, if we've had any problems, it's it's usually something like a little noise in there, a little noisier than somebody uh, likes. And specialized support has been outstanding. At some point, we're going to look at the battery and go into the display and stuff. But I, I want to comment on the design of this frame. It is kind of an upright, relaxed cruiser with the bars. And we talked about the comfortable saddle and the grips. But these tires, they're higher volume tires. You can see that from the back, see how it's a little bit wider and also a thicker rubber tread here. So these are 27.5 by 2.3. 2.3 means that's that's like the width, 2.3 inches. And they do have a decent uh, tire pressure range as well. So you can really optimize this for your weight. And that's usually printed on the side of the tire here. So 25 to 50. As a lighter weight rider, if I lower the tire pressure just a little bit and then I get my saddle and everything set up right, this can feel you know, very comfortable, even though it doesn't have a suspension fork. And that's part of the weight savings. Okay, now coming back over here to Charlie's setup, I mean, he's going all out here with a suspension stem. So it's, this is from Redshift Sports, it's called the Shock Stop Stem. He's got, what, what did you call that? Um, this is called the Visco Set. Visco Set. So I use the Visco Set in the centering spring because when I'm carrying a good deal of weight in the pizza bag, yeah. it, it wants to sort of uh, flop over a little bit. Okay, so this, it, it has like a, some sort of oil that's sort of viscous I, and it I slows think it's, it? It's some kind of uh, rubber or plastic that, that, uh, oh. that gives you a little friction there so it doesn't, uh, if, especially if you're carrying a big, uh, long, long and high weight in the back or in the rack or in the back, if your hands off the handlebar, it might want to speed wobble a little bit like 
yeah. any bike. I've experienced that before. So these are really neat options. And I was amazed to see what I call the deflopulator spring, but it is just a front wheel stabilizer. I see those on a lot of like long cargo bikes and other bikes that have front racks, just like Charlie was saying. So it helps kind of slow things down and keeps it from flopping to the side when you're parked like we are here, because it does have a side mount stand, not a center stand. So that's a neat option. They actually had to screw into the frame to get that to work. And they had to do so without, you know, messing up the battery. So this is, this is kind of high precision work that's going on here, but I love the comfort of that stem and look, it's like in that really high upright position so he can be even more upright and comfortable. We've got these upgraded ergonomic grips with two hand positions. So when you're riding longer distances and his battery pack, this one, it's even higher capacity. So I think we were saying this one's 604 watt hours over here. This, this one's 504. That's 504. This is 604. Yep. What's the 3.0? That has like a, a 400 and... The 3.0 is the four, four, uh, 460 watt hour version. 460 watt and then 504. Okay, so it's like there's, there's quite a few options and I was getting a little mixed up because you can buy a replacement pack that's 604 for $900. Right. So you could upgrade that one too that's if you want. the only one you can buy aftermarket actually. Okay. So you can't like buy the smaller battery if you wanted to save money so interesting okay thank you for that feedback like just seeing all these accessories thinking about the range and then what it means to be comfortable in long range he's got the upgraded magura hydraulic disc brakes with the quad piston calipers instead of dual piston so it's a little more surface area he's got the the bottle cage with the swat accessory emt that's like a little toolbox he's got the abus folding lock which is keyed to match his abus lock for the bike battery it's all, it all matches even the abus frame lock back here using the same key that's something that's really nice and it's all because specialized opted for a more expensive nicer uh, locking core set for their main battery pack we've got the rack time rack with the built-in light and then that suspension seat post back here. So for me, the suspension stem and seat post give you a full suspension feel. And that's all stuff that you could do on any of these models. Exactly. How much is this stem, Charlie? Uh, I think the stem is, I don't know, 70, 70 bucks or something like that. Yeah, it might We're, be under 100 and then this one like 150. No, no, 250. That's that one's the, 250. <laughs> yeah, that's like everybody goes, oh my God, that's a lot for a seat post until they ride it. And then they won't, they, they basically, you love the seat post. <laughs> you build the bike around the you seat build post. build the bike around the seat post because for this client, you know, they want a bike that's comfortable and non-threatening. Yeah. Maybe they didn't get into cycling in the first place because of the position and the comfort. Yeah. And with this, uh, what they call ground control geometry, uh -huh. you're able to touch the ground a little easier than you will. Oh, because uh, it's 68 degrees, right. like the head tube angle and the seat tube angle. So it's like leaned back so you can put your feet down, but still but get good still pedal get, extension. Exactly. I'm sorry, I'm, I get excited and I'm just like <laughs> barreling through. Tell me about this rack back here. What is going on? So this is the Coho rack. Uh, usually with a lot of these uh, cargo trailers, they are two wheels. Mm -hmm. And that means you're, you're gonna be wider and you have to plan getting around things. Yeah. Where the inline, um, it's both inline and it has suspension. So instead of being kind of a rattle trap, two wheel, shopping cart it's it's a bit more performance oriented yeah and there's um, that single so it's like kind of tracks along right where you've ridden versus the two wheels and it's got that cool kickstand thing yep the stabilizer yeah and this also this is a real lifesaver because when you it's getting the thing on and off so for quick on and off for you know turning this turning your bike into a pickup truck essentially yeah and uh instead of it being a, a five minute stooping down getting it this this is what unlocks and unlocks the the uh the clamps from the two sides here when your point about okay so before i i'm gonna make another point but got a fender on that too how much is this rack got the flag i think the the uh the trailer is i'm gonna say 450 or so okay. uh it's a burley burley's got the great reputation and name and trailer it's great that it's compatible with the through axle in the rear and that you guys have experience with that. I wanted to mention also that Specialized has done a really good job in positioning their key and also charging port high up. So you don't have to bend way down here and it's not gonna be close to those crank arms, you know, if they get kicked or something. A lot of other bikes put the charging ports and stuff down here. Specialized put it right where it should be, in my opinion, up high. So now I'm gonna show you, and I've got the gloves on, Charlie. Will you help me get the battery sure, off sure. this other one? Yep. Here we go. So it does come with that Abus uh, key set. So it's a little bit, when it's brand new, it's like takes a little bit to get it in there and you have to make sure you get it all the way seated. Yeah. And then it'll, it'll sort of pop out like that. And 
and then you pull it out sort of to the top and side. And that's great. That's what allows them to have that lower top tube for the lower standover height. So we think we weighed this with 6.2 pounds. It does have a little infographic on the side so it lights up and shows you like how full the battery is, which is nice because not everyone has room for a bike inside their house. You might leave that in your garage, but the garage could get really hot or really cold and that can be hard on the lithium ion cells. So, you know, cool dry location for this. Try not to drop it. Do charge it up regularly. If you aren't using it, try to keep it at least half full because it, if it drains to zero, that's hard on the cells too. You got this nice 1.9 pound charger. It does have a magnetic interface. That's that piece right there. So it's a really snazzy battery charger, you know, four amps. It goes pretty quickly. Uh, the wall side plugs out so it fits inside of your backpack really nicely as well. And then, you know, again, if you trip over it, the magnet's just gonna pop off. It's not gonna tip the bike over or crack. Will you put it back in? Oh, and there's sure. the interface. And oh. Uh, we, we, uh, we really had a problem with the first generation where they had the covers weren't leashed in there. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is sort of like instant, goes back into place and you can't lose it. Fantastic. I'm so glad you brought that up. Like for me, that's been a big, it's such it's, a bummer. You spend like $4,000 uh, on a yeah. bike and then you lose the battery cover. Well, and also a lot of the rubber covers, you know, they never quite go back in, right? They yeah. just they just stay like a little bit like this and you, and people go, what about rain? What about what's going on there, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and this one just seats firmly without having to think about it. I do want to call out that all of the specialized, uh, the motor from Broza, the battery and the display, they're all like IP rated ingress protection against dust and water. So they're supposed to be pretty water resistant. And I, have you had any experiences with water on your bikes? I haven't had any problem and I've been I've been in torrential downpours and used the hose in it. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's DC current, so you know a lot of people get concerned that you know it's going to be a problem in the rain. And I haven't had any. Uh, if anything, it's about dirt and, and when it is so wet, dirt and grit getting in there and making noises in your oh, disc yes. and your chain and everything else. And I have experienced some of the noise stuff Charlie was talking about with the motors, especially on the early Broza motors with like mountain bikes and stuff where people were riding them hard at demo days and it starts to sound a little bit more like you just, you hear it more. These are brand new bikes, so they're going to be pretty quiet. That's right. You want to pop this back on? Yep. So you really got to line up the base. That's the first point right there. See how it's just right. And then the top sets in and this one clicked into clicked place in perfectly. perfectly. You do want to double check because sometimes they, they seem like they're in and then it's actually not quite clicked in. You can smack it from the side and get it to really lock in. And you're, if you don't have it in there and it bounces out, it can be like a, you can watch your dream expensive <laughs> battery, thousand dollar battery. That's right. Down the street. That's so. a sad day. Um, let's boot up the display. So he powered on the bike already by pressing the power button down here. That's one of my complaints about these bikes. You have to reach way down here to turn it on versus having a power button up high uh, on the, the button pad or something. But I guess they wanted to keep this simple. And then that doubles as the little infographic for capacity that we mentioned earlier. Uh, this is the TCDW display. What is it? The Turbo, Turbo Connect? Turbo Connect display. Ah, yeah. Almost got it that time. I like how compact it is and the fact that it's on that plastic slider ring means you can position it in different areas of your handlebar, which Charlie has done over here. So see, he put a little rubber grommet thing and he moved it out of the way so he could mount his phone and use the phone for GPS navigation or boombox tunes cruising through the hood, right? Like um, that's- Conference calls. <laughs> conference uh, calls. When you're on meeting, mute it and just listen in. And he moved the bell, right? From, cause on the, the stock one, it's over on the left. So the point I'm making is a fairly versatile display. It's not removable. You can swivel it to reduce the glare. Cause see, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of glare in certain in angles here today, cause it is so bright. So it's nice that there are some options. I wish that this had like a little USB charging port so you could charge your phone. They don't have that. The older blocks displays had one, but it was only five volt, 500 milliamp. In Charlie's shop, they do have some of the 2019 models that still have the blocks display. It is removable. It has the charging port, but it's only gonna work for Android. And it won't have the Bluetooth mission control app compatibility that this one will have. That's a new feature kind of for the 2020 models. So over here we have set, plus, minus, and lights. So you can actually turn the lights on and off. And uh, let's try to do that real quick here. So just brighten it up. I love those side windows for visibility that we talked about. And then there's the rear light. It's got like seven LEDs. It's pretty, it's a pretty bright setup, which is nice. We've got speed up top. It's in my, uh, kilometers per hour right now. 
battery percentage, very nice. And then 10 ticks on the battery infographic along the left side there. So it's a, it's a fairly good precise readout. It's not something like you're guessing with the five dots down here. Those are 20% increments, which is fairly common on other e-bike systems. So distance, that's like our trip distance. And then it says like there's a page thing and one. So that means we're on like page one of the menus. If we press set, it cycles through the other four or we can do left and right here and it does the same thing. So page two, so we got like our average speed and a timer and pedal cadence there. Page three, we got power and watts and speed at top. Page four, we've got uh, kilocalories and page five, we've got odometer. So you see, just kind of cycle through. If you hold both of these buttons simultaneously, it lets you enter and adjust some of the settings. Um, it's a kind of a complex display. I was looking through the display manual um, back Back at the shop, we had like all the manuals and we we're really trying to figure this thing out. We did connect it to the Mission Control app, which is neat. Charlie's got it on his phone. And it was like, you just basically open the app on the phone and then it says searching for your bike. And then you put in the serial number and then a little pin comes up on the screen and you just enter the pin on your phone and it matches. And that lets you do some diagnostics, troubleshooting. It lets you dial in the three assist levels. So right now we're on assist level two we could take it down to one or even off, and then you're just riding a bicycle with lights, which is kind of cool, saving that battery. But each one of these assist levels has like a default setting of how hard it comes on and how much power it gives. You can adjust that with the Mission Control app. And then there's even like a trip planning mode where you can say, I want to go 20 miles, and I know I, I want to get there and still have 10% left on my battery. And it will automatically manage how much power you get so that you get there without running out. I mean, that is, that is really cool. And to me, it sort of makes up for the lack of a range estimator on on the display. It's probably better than a range estimator actually because that's just an estimate thinking forward whereas this dynamically adjusts on your way. So if you hit a big hill, it might have thought, oh, we have like 50 miles of range and then you hit the hill and it's like, now there's only 10. With this, it dynamically says, we know you wanna go 10 miles. We're just gonna make sure the battery doesn't run out when you get there. And again, that's with the Mission Control app. Some other secrets about this display and interface are if you hold the plus button here for a couple seconds, we get walk mode which could be useful if the bike's loaded up with a rack or you're in a park. I think we hold minus, it will uh, clear some of the trip stats. And then I already talked about holding the left and right and getting into some of the other menus here. I think that's that's good on my end, man. I wanted to just hop on and cruise around the streets. That sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, here we go. I usually ride in the highest level of assist for these reviews because I want you to see how quickly the motor responds and also to hear kind of the highest noise output that you might expect. But these motors are very, they're very quiet and smooth. It's one of the big wins for me. So here we go. I'm not pushing very hard. It's not taking me very fast. But as soon as I start to really pedal down on it. There we go. And very quickly, we're up to sort of the top speed of 20 miles per, well, actually, this is a speed pedal X, so. I was, uh, I was mistaken. It gets up to 28 miles per hour. Hey buddy, look at those lights. I like the flashing light on Charlie's setup. Again, these are basically the same bike. It's just, he's got a little bit more powerful motor and a nicer gear spread and a bigger battery. When you're shifting gears, it's good to kind of ease up a little bit on the pedal pressure. Cause it's not just your power anymore. It's you plus a fairly powerful motor. I'm gonna go right over that pothole just to show. Look at that seat post suspension. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love that. I can't ride a bike without it now. Sweet. And these bikes handle pretty well too. I can ride with this kind of no-handed because of those wider tires. They feel very stable. And it's a unique size. It's kind of this 27.5 inch diameter which is like right in between you're getting a sturdier build because it's a smaller wheel but with a bigger tire so more comfort okay guys from here you can see that 48 tooth chain ring with a narrow wide uh, chain ring i guess <laughs> plastic guard on the outside which is really nice to keep you clean and look at how the frame even kind of cuts away so the drivetrain is just really tight it's actually 148 millimeter hub spacing in the rear which is a little bit wider and provides maybe a little bit more room for the cassette and then the disc brake and maybe that little magnet sensor thing it, I'm not used to seeing that. Normally it's like 135 millimeters or 142. So this is, it's a unique setup. It's back to specialized and all their custom designs and stuff. 
nice little sticker slap guard that preserves your paint, won't get chipped up. But then having that clutch is also going to reduce the bounce. I'm going to pedal through and I'm going to pedal at really high cadence initially in a lower gear just so you can see how fast that chain ring spins, how much support it provides. Because to me, that's a real differentiator with the Broza motors. Um, yeah, here we go. Excellent. You got that nice smooth braking going on. It's just a good, it's a good setup and very like tight. That's the word that keeps coming to mind whenever I test ride this or the Vado. All this, the specialized city bikes just feel like the, the power and the energy transfer from your feet to the pedals, the cranks through the frame and then into the drive system and drivetrain. It's just clean, it's quiet and it's responsive. Um, but it can be made even more comfortable as we saw with Charlie's bike. And that's also, of course, important. So there's the little satellite under the bottom. Well, you guys, I think that is about it. It's always fun cruising around the neighborhood and then hanging out with someone who's so expert and got all the different bikes we can compare back to back. Thank you so much, Charlie. My pleasure. Thank had, you, Court. Had a fun time out here today. Uh, for the full written review with all the specs and measurements, like standover height, minimum saddle height, width, length, and then some more information on the display, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com and in the forums. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.